Hi guys. Today I want to take you through some considerations about what actually determines the plasma elimination half-life. You know, it's a bit unfortunate that many people think that the half-life is the main pharmacokinetic property of a drug that they need to know about. Here I want to try and help you develop a sense of perspective about the appropriate relevance of the plasma elimination half-life as a pharmacokinetic parameter. Now this short video is really an extension of the previous video where we discussed the concepts and applications of the half-life. If you haven't watched that, it's probably a good idea for you to view that video first. But if you'd rather just go through this first, it would also be okay. Let me first address the question, is the half-life a primary pharmacokinetic parameter for any drug? And the answer is no. This is a very fundamental misconception. Let me explain. The primary pharmacokinetic parameters are those that are directly a consequence of a physiological or metabolic process. The primary pharmacokinetic parameters usually are recognized to be bioavailability, rate of absorption, volume of distribution, and clearance. The half-life, however, is a derived parameter from the two primary parameters of volume of distribution and clearance. It is directly related to the volume of distribution, but inversely related to the clearance. As clearance increases, half-life should decrease and vice versa. But as volume of distribution increases, half-life should also increase and vice versa. Let me show you a series of graphs so that you can appreciate this better. Let us use as an example a drug with a 12 hours half-life. Now here is what happens to the half-life if you have the clearance. The half-life increases as expected. And if you double the clearance, the half-life predictably decreases. Together with changes in half-life, clearance changes also affects the AUC or area under the curve. But note that the C0 remains unchanged. This is because the volume of distribution was unchanged. Let's now consider what happens if you alter the volume of distribution. If you double the volume of distribution, the half-life lengthens, as can be predicted. Conversely, if you decrease the volume of distribution, the half-life shortens. You can see from the graphs that the C0 is also inversely affected. The area under the curve, however, remains unchanged. You can't see this clearly here, so you will need to take my word for it. But the area under the curve is unchanged because the clearance was not altered. Now think about how these play out when the drug is administered in the multi-dose regimen. Here you see it takes approximately 60 hours to reach steady state. If you have the clearance, the AUC and steady-state concentrations increase and as the half-life also increases, the time to reach steady-state increases. Conversely, if you double the clearance, the AUC and steady-state concentration decrease because the half-life is shortened, the time to reach steady-state decreases. But look at the dramatic increase in fluctuations. What happens when the volume of distribution changes instead? Here you can see that if the volume of distribution decreases, the half-life is shorter. And steady state occurs earlier. But note that the AUC is unchanged. If you increase the volume of distribution, the half-life is predictably increased and the time to reach steady state is longer. But again, the steady state concentration is unchanged. Now here's something important for you to consider. 
If you observe that the drug's half-life is not altered under various conditions, can you assume that the drug's pharmacokinetics has not been altered, affected? The answer is no. The half-life can remain unchanged because of parallel and equal changes in volume of distribution and clearance. As you can see from these plots, the pharmacokinetic outcomes can be very different. I hope you can appreciate by now that half-life is not a primary pharmacokinetic parameter, but one that is dependent on the volume of distribution and clearance. This is not a trivial matter. Sometimes we can be too focused on the half-life. If we do not look beyond the half-life, we will miss vital clues about the drug's pharmacokinetic behaviour. This is really the first step in understanding the processes contributing to variability in drug response. Now guys, if you find this video useful, please feel free to share with your friends and colleagues and subscribe to our videos. The next video will deal with zero order or non-linear pharmacokinetics. Thanks a lot. I'll be back with you again soon.